Now let's turn to drugs that increase the sensitivity of the body to insulin. And the first one we'll talk about are biguanides. Um, metformin is an example of this. This might this is a drug class that a, a person who's uh, just been diagnosed as being diabetic is told to lose weight uh, and will possibly go very much likely go on metformin. It's used very commonly in people, uh, and and the, the other class that's used in this situation or as a second second uh, tier drug to improve insulin sensitivity are the thiazolidine diones, and we'll talk about those as well. Now, metformin uh, has been tried in cats uh, almost 20 years ago by Nelson, where he looked at five diabetic cats and gave this dose of 50 milligram per kilogram twice a day uh, with the goal of lowering blood glucose. Three of the animals out of the five didn't respond, one died, and, and generally the um, animals didn't tolerate it well at all and it wasn't all that particularly effective. So um, while being the best or the first line drug in humans, it certainly is not that case in cats. Let's now take a look at the thiazolidine diones. Uh, basically what they do is improve insulin sensitivity and thereby altering glucose and lipid metabolism. And the, the drug that's shown here is rosiglitazone. Uh, if you hear anything that says itazone at the end, you can guess that it's a thiazolidine dione. The thiazolidine dione's basically act through the PPAR receptors, alpha, gamma, and delta. And what does PPAR stand for? Peroxisome proliferator activated receptors. And so this is a nuclear receptor based action, uh, and what do they end up doing? Um, they tend to lead to stimulate adipogenesis and lipogenesis, lipid storage. Um, they produce adipokines, and they're a major target. Uh, so fat is a major target of the thiazolidine diones. They impact through PPAR gamma lipogenesis and lipid storage, as I mentioned. Through PPAR delta, you basically have uh, stimulation of energy uncoupling and fatty acid oxidation, uh, and also the tendency to uncouple um, energy uh, and impact muscle fatty acid oxidation. Of course, what you're looking for in a diabetic animal is to reduce the blood glucose, so the tendency for uh, PPARs to stimulate whole body insulin sensitivity and lead to increased glucose uptake, say by the muscle, is absolutely crucial, as well as the ability to oxidize uh, this energy, so to speak. So, the, so PPARs are overall impacting muscle, that's where we think about their clinical benefit, but also fat and liver. So fundamentally, um, the thiazolidine diodes stimulate thermogenesis and energy dissipation, and they do this by uh, stimulating the expression of what are called uncoupling proteins uh, in the mitochondria. They fundamentally lead to a redistribution of the sort of bad intracellular lipid in organs like liver and muscle back into where they belong, the peripheral adipocytes. And so this redistribution of lipid and insulin responsive organs is a key effect of the thiazolidine diones. So how does this class of drugs impact um, the uh, excess glucose or the hyperglycemia that you're trying to manage? Uh, certainly insulin, when it's present an adequate amount um, and when it's there's an adequate uh, sensitivity to insulin, we see that it acts through um, both the deposition of glucose into glycogen as well as the uh, uptake of glucose by GLUT4 vesicles uh, and, and then storage. So the uptake of glucose 
basically what these vesicles do once they're glute four storage vesicles produced is it goes to the surface of the membrane and these transporters are, uh, in, lead to an influx of glucose. So when there's insulin resistance, uh, the PPAR gamma stimulation can over, help to overcome that by leading to, in the end, an increased uptake of glucose. One of the first uh, drugs in this class that was tried in, in cats was darglitazone. It was not ever put on the market for cats. In fact, none of these uh, thiazolidine dions are on the market for cats that are at least they're not approved for cats. But in this uh, study, um, let me walk you through this relatively complex slide. Uh, if you, these are uh, obese cats and they're given a placebo. So this is following them from the period of time that this dargalizone will be given to when it, when it was completed. And we'll talk about that next. But just to show that over time, um, Insulin levels of a cat that's obese may be here at the beginning, but at the end of this study, they actually go up even farther without having any impact on what, what you were looking at here is the result of a, a glucose tolerance test. The glucose tolerance is not adequate and it's not improved. Obviously, you wouldn't expect that in, uh, with just a, a placebo. Now, in contrast, after a period of, uh, I think it's uh, three or four weeks of darglizone treatment, uh, we can take a look at the insulin uh, be that is before. Okay, so this is the insulin of the animal before, very similar to the other group. And this is the insulin level down, reduced. And we've actually seen uh, the glucose from before, the glucose tolerance showed a higher level and, and a slower decline on the dargalitazone. The peak level after IV bolus of glucose was lower and the degradation or reduction of glucose levels over time was sped up. So we're seeing improved insulin sensitivity with dargalitazone. And after that study, uh, a pharmacokinetic study of the drug that was available um, on the market, uh, pioglitazone, in lean and obese cats, um, which indicated that a dosage for this drug of one to three milligram per kilogram would lead to similar drug concentrations as might be achieved in a human. But this was a short-term PK study and uh, chronic administration studies uh, were not performed, and to my understanding, to my knowledge now, there haven't been a longer-term study of this drug to evaluate efficacy and safety, and certainly, again, not approved for cats. 